Because I think what we recognized from the very beginning was that, one, Congo's, the war is not ending in six months, right? We could get 10 million people out on the streets, and you still would not see an end to this war in six months, right? There's a systemic nature to this conflict that's going to need long-term constituencies pushing for peace over and over and over again. Uh, and I think we recognize that like one of the biggest challenges is that no one is really willing to talk about it. Um, there's not information that's distributed about it, right? So the way we were looking at it is like whoever controls distribution of information controls perception, right? Whoever controls perception controls paradigm. And at a pretty fundamental level, whoever controls paradigm controls reality. And so no one was distributing information about Congo, and so Congo continued to be a bloodbath. Look, like, our, our consciousness is dominated by media. Dominated. Um, we really don't get it until we see it. This is like the way that the modern mind is shaped. So let's let people see it. And we always say that falling whistles is a small window into our world's largest war. So let's create more windows. Let's create more portals. I don't think it's that people don't care, I think it's that people don't see. That's not their fault, that's ours. Let's let them see. And then they're going to care, and then we can change it. Um, you know, we can have live, real-time, streaming videos from Congo to D.C. now. Right? Like, why are we having meetings in D.C. talking about Congo issues that don't have Congolese people full size on a screen in the side of the room? Right? Like, um, to me, that's like, it, it, it's just like counterproductive traditions holding us back from what is going to be, whether we want it to be or not, right? Like, we get to live in a world where we can literally go through space and time and have portals into other places. Let's use it.